In this section, we're going to cover exponents and radicals. An exponential term is a number written in this form, where the big number here is called the base, and this is called the exponent. And remember that a number to a power tells you to write that number that many times. It is still a very common mistake that students make that they see 5 to the third power and they initially want to make it 5 times 3, which is 15, which is not right because this is 125. So in example 1, we're going to raise each of these rational numbers to an exponent. And you might be looking at B and C going, oh, well, those are the same thing. They're not. And this is something we talk about with the graphing calculator a lot. So 1 half to the fifth power, which you know is 1 half five times. Remember when you multiply fractions that you multiply all the numerators together. So 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. And the denominator, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, is 32. If you know how to do this in the graphing calculator, my recommendation to you is to always use the parentheses if you see them. So for this particular problem, 1 half to the fifth power, I would have used the parentheses on the graphing calculator. B says to raise negative 3 to the fourth power. That means write four negative 3s. Here's a little thing that we should talk about, and hopefully you've talked about it before. Anytime you raise it, a negative number to an even power, like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, the answer is going to be positive. In this case, it's positive 81. And the reason that's really important to know is because this problem here does not say raise negative 3 to the 4th power. It says raise 3 to the 4th power and then make the answer negative. The graphing calculator is very picky about parentheses. So if you're doing this in a calculator, please make sure that you use parentheses if they use it in the book or in a problem that you're given. And don't if they don't. In both Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, we talked about the laws of exponents. And one of the things I want you to notice as we go through these real fast is that there are no laws of exponents that have addition or subtraction signs in the original problems. Be very, very careful about that. So uh, pro law one is the one where you would add the exponents. And the only time you add the exponents it was when the bases are the same and you're multiplying. Law two is the case where you subtract the exponents. And the only time you do that is when you are dividing and they have to have the same base. Remember the only thing that gets subtracted are the exponents because if you have a problem like 3x to the third over 6x, the coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables, they do not get subtracted, only exponents. Number three is the case where you multiply the exponents. One and three are often confused, so be careful about that. Number four is the case where you distribute the exponent as is number 5. You can distribute the exponent if what's going on in the parentheses is either multiplication or division, but not addition or subtraction. Law 6, anything to the 0 power is 1. If you don't believe me, try it out in your calculator. Put any number in the world in your calculator, decimal, fraction, whatever, positive, negative, Raise it to the zero power and see what the calculator spits out. Number seven is the one we're going to run across quite a bit. A to the negative n is it's the same as one over a to the n. We call it a reciprocal identity. In other words, you flip the fraction. If you have something that looks like number eight, a negative exponent flips the fraction. As a matter of fact, 7 and 8 are really the same one. It's just that this would be 1 to the n power, and what's 1 to any power? It's 1. And 9, same thing. If you have negative exponents in the numerator, it moves those terms to the denominator. And if you have a negative exponent in the denominator of a fraction, it moves it to the numerator. 
and notice the negative exponents go away. The reason, sorry, that number 9 works is because the numerator, if you simplify it, becomes 1 over a to the n. The denominator becomes 1 over b to the m. And the way we simplify a fraction within a fraction is to take the numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. In example two, we're going to deal with zero and negative exponents. Anything to the zero power is one. I don't care what it is. Fraction, decimal, positive, negative, it is always going to be one. The reason that happens is if you think about the property of exponents, you should know that anything divided by itself is always one. But if you think about this problem in terms of the laws of exponents, the laws of exponents say to subtract the exponents. We end up with x to the zero power, except that we know anything divided by itself is one. Therefore, anything to the zero power must be one. x to the negative first, flip it, one over x to the first. We don't usually write the, the exponent of one, so you would normally write this. However, if you wrote one as an exponent, I wouldn't mark it wrong. Negative 2 to the negative third power. Well, first of all, ignore the negative 2 for a second. This is really what's happening. Now we can deal with the fact that the number inside the parentheses is negative. When you raise a negative number to an odd power, the answer will always be negative. Unlike when you raise a negative to an even power, where it will always be positive. So the answer is just negative 1 eighth. Now, a question always arises, well, is it 1 over negative 8? Is it negative 1 over 8? Or is it negative 1 eighth? My son just asked me this question the other day, and the answer is yes, it is. All of those are correctly written. However, for the most part, we tend to write it this way. In example 3, we're going to use the laws of exponents to simplify expressions. And Again, these are all pretty simple ones. We'll get to the more complicated ones as we move along. These are the ones you should have seen in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. x to the 4 times x to the 7th is x to the 4 plus 7, which is x to the 11th. y to the 4th, y to the negative 7th is y to the 4 plus negative 7, which is negative 3, except we don't leave negative exponents we would write the answer as 1 over y to the third. c to the ninth over c to the fifth is c to the 9 minus 5, which is c to the fourth. b to the fourth to the fifth, that's the case where you multiply the exponents. 3x to the third is the same as raising 3 to the third and x to the third. When we get to problems like this, put a little star here, this is where students forget to distribute their exponent. They always think that you only distribute the exponent to the variables, but you also distribute the exponent to any numerical values. So 3 to the third is 27, not 9, and then x to the third. And then f, you're going to raise the numerator to the fifth power and the denominator to the fifth power. So you should have x to the fifth over 32. Now let's talk about some more complicated expressions. In example 4a, when you go to simplify expressions with exponents, the first thing you need to look for are any expressions that have exponents on the outside of parentheses, because those need to be dealt with first. 3ab to the fourth, when you raise it to the third, is going to be 27a to the third, b to the twelfth. Now, remember, you're raising everything inside the parentheses to the third power. So it's 3 to the third, which is 27, and then a to the third, and then b to the fourth to the third, which is the same as saying this, which is the same as saying this. That's where the b to the twelfth comes from. Now I can multiply that by 2a to the third b squared. When I go and do this problem, I always tell my students, multiply the coefficients. So 2 times 27 is 54. And then do a to the third and times a to the third 
This is the case where you add them. The only time you multiply is when you have something like this, b to the fourth to the third. But a to the third times a to the third is the case where you add. And then b squared and b to the twelfth, that's going to be b to the fourteenth. For example, b, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the exponents in each of those parentheses. So the first fraction becomes x to the third over y to the third. The second fraction becomes y to the eighth, x to the fourth over z to the fourth. Now when I multiply these together, notice that the numerators, there's an x to the third and an x to the fourth. One of the nice things about fractions is that the order in which I write them doesn't matter because everything is being multiplied. So now maybe this looks a little bit nicer. This is x to the seventh. Uh, I have a y to the eighth over y to the third. That's the case where you subtract. Eight minus three is five. And then there is nothing to simplify with the z to the fourth, so that would be the final answer. Now let's do a problem where we're going to simplify expressions with negative exponents. There's not really one right way of going about doing this problem. So one way of doing this problem is to start by getting rid of the negative exponents so that s to the negative 2 in the denominator goes to the top and becomes a positive 2. That t to the negative 4th in the numerator gets moved to the denominator and becomes a 4. So now I have 6 over 2 is 3. s times s squared is s to the third. And t squared and t to the fourth is t to the sixth because that's the case where you add the exponents. Another way of doing the problem would have been to do this. And then simplify each of those fractions. So you would have 3. This is the case where you subtract. Well, what's 1 minus negative 2? Well, it's 3. And then here, what's negative 4 minus 2? It's negative 6. And then all you had to do was move your t to the negative 6 to the bottom and becomes t to the 6. In problem B, because the outside exponent is negative, the laws of exponents say that I can do this. Flip the inside fraction. I'm going to make that exponent positive. Now it's a lot easier to deal with this problem. 3 squared is 9. z to the third squared is z to the sixth. And the denominator is y squared. And then that would be your final answer. Scientific notation is very important in both math and science. Remember, scientific notation is a way of writing extremely large or extremely small numbers. It's always written in the form a times 10 to the nth power, where a is a number between 1 and 10. Notice the inequality symbols. A can be 1, but it can't be 10. It can be 9.99999, but not 10 on the nose. N is always an integer. It's going to be positive, it's going to be negative. If N is positive, it's going to be a really big number. If N is negative, it's a really small number. On the graphing calculator, this is an old calculator, but most of the faces of your calculator should be about the same. The scientific notation key is this EE -E here. It's the second function above the comma. So if you want to do a problem in your calculator, like if you want to type in 5 times 10 to the negative third power, you would start by typing in 5, and then you would hit second, comma, and then a little E would pop up next to it. The only other thing you need to type in then is negative 3. The calculator's representation for scientific notation will always be an E. I know it says double E above the comma, and on the face of your calculator you only see an E. I don't know why it does that, but that's how it works. In order to change from decimal to scientific notation, I'm going to review the way we learned it in middle school, but then I'm going to tell you how you can do this on your graphing calculator. One of the things we're going to learn in the pre-calc honors class is how to use a lot of the functions on the calculator you probably have not used yet. 
All right, so in middle school, the way we learned how to do this was we were told to put our decimal between the first two numbers. So the first two numbers in 56,920 are the 5 and the 6. And then write times 10. The exponent is how many places you write you, you move the decimal. Students always get confused. Well, should the, should the exponent be positive or negative? Well, I always teach it like this. If the, um, if the number is an amount of money you'd like to have, it's probably a positive exponent. I would like to have $56,920. So one, two, three, four spaces is where I move the decimal, or I move it around four numbers. In B, the two first two non-zero numbers are 9 and 3, so that's where I'm going to move the decimal. Do I want 0 0.000093 dollars? Well, that's not even a penny, so no. That's going to be a negative exponent. One, two, three, four, five spaces, and it's a negative. Well, what if you wanted to have your graphing calculator do this for you? Well, let's go back here for a second. If you hit mode, the top of your screen, when you hit mode, you will see normal, psi, and ing. And it's probably already highlighted on normal. Well, if you change the mode to be psi, that's scientific notation. So you have to put the cursor on it and hit enter. Then type this in the face of your calculator and hit enter. And what will pop up on your screen will be this. In order to calculate with scientific notation, I would just plug this into my calculator verbatim. So I give you A, B, and C, and notice there that I use the approximately equal symbol to, instead of the equals to symbol. These would be like rounded off numbers. Well, what I would do in my calculator is I would just literally hit parentheses, and then I would put in 0 0.00046, close it, parentheses, uh, 1.697E22, Remember, you have to hit second comma, and then you put in the exponent. The calculator understands that the E means times 10. And then I would use the division key, parentheses, 2.91E, negative 18. And then the calculator should spit out 2.68E36, which is 2.68 times 10 to the 36. Please do not leave E in your answer. That always irks me. Please convert it back to times 10 because that's the appropriate notation.